I was a extension agent for the University of Florida Extension and taught the Master Gardener class for three years, three classes, and also worked on uh, Florida Friendly Landscaping for several years, and I've been in the environmental field doing uh, different education programs over the years. So tonight, we're going to talk about fertilizing appropriately. These are the nine principles of Florida Friendly Landscaping um, that were put together by the University of Florida. Um, but we're also going to be claiming them as river friendly. And actually, these, these nine principles are really principles that apply to any gardening anywhere on the planet, honestly. And so uh, fertilizing appropriately, um, does that mean we're going to fertilize like 10 times a year or 12 times a year? Because if you think about it, if you have a lawn service, you're going to be getting uh, those services monthly. And they may be putting out fertilizers or they may be putting um, different chemicals out. But even during uh, some of the blackout periods, which we'll go over in the future in a little bit, uh, you'll learn more about that. So these are the basic problems. They're pretty big, horrible problems with the St. John's River and a lot of our waterways uh, in Florida. Nutrient pollution is a combination of nitrogen and phosphorus and chlorophyll A that uh, creates a, a situation in the water where it grows algae and there's different types of algae and they become the dominant species in the water if you've removed a lot of the aquatic vegetation and it can cause a pretty bad problem. Uh, so we also have problems with biosolids. Does everybody know who, who knows what a biosolid is? So biosolid, one person didn't know, is uh, um, it's the waste after the, the uh, wastewater treatment system. It's all the stuff that we put in our water as we send it out. And they take that and they spread that on the land applications. Uh, and, and in some places, they converted it and started to make it into a, a fertilizer to put out on the land instead. Also, water withdrawals. We have a uh, uh, right now, the water that they're taking up the St. John's River, they're using for irrigation purposes, and potentially in the future, it's going to be from river to our tap uh, and with a lot of money invested. Also, we have some interesting water policies in Florida that have um, had some repeals over the last couple of years, uh, some really important water quality regulations and, and some lack of enforcement. Uh, sedimentation and in, invasive species. A lot of our rivers are filled with um, some of the aquarium plants you might know. Some people call them armored fat, catfish or costumus, and they have um, really taken over, and uh, we have an issue with that, and them also kind of boring into the spring heads and creating some erosion and problems with, with that area. Also, we want to make sure that water is life. You know, three quarters of the earth is covered with water, and out of that three quarters of the earth, only about 3% is fresh water. And that used to be in the ice caps, which are changing now into some waterways and streams, rivers going through the oceans. And then the other is in our aquifers, the other water that we drink. So we'd like the water to be swimmable and fishable. And a lot of people say, well, I don't eat the fish, but all of our wildlife and different critters, you know, they eat the fish. And um, there are, uh, if you are a fisher person and you get a fishing license, there are some consumption advisories that the Department of Health have put together. And these consumption advisories are things like mercury, and uh, there's some other things, uh, dioxins and things in the fish that are unhealthy. So women of childbearing age, pregnant, and small children, and people with immune comp compromised areas shouldn't be eating those fish. But once a week is some of them, and some of them are once every two weeks. Uh, this is a, a, a model of our aquifer. The water, the ground beneath our feet provides us with um, our drinking water. 90% of Florida's drinking water supply comes from the aquifer. The aquifer is an ancient marine layer that's made of calcium carbonate or limestone, as people call it, and this water uh, goes through these holes and flows from South Carolina down through uh, Georgia into Florida and, and the little parts of Alabama and this water is, is flowing very slowly under a huge amount of pressure under the ground and we uh, 
put in our wells and pull out that water and create uh, different uh, atmospheres down there. And then we have areas where we inject things into that water. And so those, those conduits can spread the water. Like also when we do things on top of the land, we can impact our aquifer as well. Um, conservation of irrigation water, 50% of our water use goes to uh, landscaping. And uh, it also goes to applying different uh, pesticides and agriculture, of course. Uh, and so where, when is it too much when we have taken out too much? Uh, I know that in Southwest Florida, they've had subsidence of the land. They've dropped several feet. Um, waterways have dried up over time. Uh, and once the aquifer compacts, there's no way to, to puff it back up and to get water into it. So that poses a bit of a problem for our future. So, fertilizers, they're a problem. 55 million acres of fertilizers are, are of jerk grass uh, statewide. And that was back in 2006. So if you think that was quite a while ago, we probably are closer to maybe 6 million acres of jerk grass. Um, and then a lot of the problems with fertilizers is the people who apply them. Uh, we have some people who are professional applicators and, and homeowners, do-it-yourself folks, uh, and there are certain classes that we have for them. Also, uh, people who misapply the fertilizer by putting it out and getting it onto the hard surfaces, and once that is spread onto the hard surfaces, if you don't sweep that back up, then you get uh, problems with that running off and being picked up by the water that from the rain or different things that's called non-point source pollution also we have to pay a lot of money out of our tax dollars spent on cleaning up waterways and trying to restore habitats uh, also um, blue baby disease it's a it's a, a disease where they, you kind of uh, are inside your uh, hemoglobin the water the nitrates they combine in the hemoglobin and they kind of deplete the oxygen so you become anoxic. So um, you hear about that a lot up in the north area of a lot of agricultural lands. Also, um, when you have fertilizers that are put out when the plants go dormant, Florida's kind of spooky like that. Uh, in the wintertime, when the nighttime temperatures get below 50 degrees, the grasses go to sleep in dormancy and so you'll see in areas where there's not a lot of irrigation or maintenance that those areas look kind of dead uh, you know but they come back in the when the season changes also um, we have ammonia based uh, quick release fertilizers that are very water soluble and those uh, can percolate down and then wash off and aren't uptake by the plant roots themselves so why are, what are we doing about these problems? We're doing so much about a lot of these problems. We've created a lot of ordinances. Uh, we have blackout periods with our ordinances, meaning that you're not to apply fertilizers. But in the state, a lot of the blackout periods have been kind of, um, they have uh, the availability to get a variance. So in, for instance, Orange County, you can take an online class and once you, pass that online class, then you can fertilize during the blackout periods because they are trying to let you know uh, about that. So it's that way about water restrictions as well. They have variances um, if you have large water users and they can't water their subdivision perhaps in, in the right days and times, they get a variance. So that kind of skews what you think how effective some of these ordinances are as well. Also, in 2008 and 2009, I attended quite a bit of the fertilizer uh, task force uh, meetings, and it was very interesting. It was a lot about industry. The industry was there uh, really, uh, you know, being their advocate to not have, you know, they, they accused the homeowners of being the ones who misappropriated the fertilizers application instead of uh, you know the industry and I uh, actually did a research project with the University of Central Florida on the Wakaiba area and we did a basin study and I knocked on doors and did interviews of homeowners to determine exactly how much people did actually fertilize and it really didn't seem like statistically significant information to show that it was the homeowners that was a lot of the problem also um, the University of Florida has developed some trainings 
And so if you hire people to apply fertilizer, it's called the Green Industries Best Management Practices class. And once uh, a landscape industry person takes one of those, it's a six hour class, they uh, then have to pay $25 and apply for a fertilizer applicator's license. And I um, haven't checked on that number very much, but I'm not so sure that there's a huge amount of people who actually obtain their fertilizer licenses. I know they have some in-house training for fertilizer application, but you know that industry is difficult because it's a low wage and people are in and out and you don't quite get those people doing the things that you know they, they learn because they move on to their next job. Um, also, a lot of the local governments do really wonderful programs and they're um, attended, but uh, we could really do a whole lot more than we're doing. So some of the barriers to this solution is, I don't know, Aesthetically pleasing landscapes are, are very important to a lot of homeowners associations and people relate that to their uh, property values. But they're really, if, you, if you're a property appraiser, I don't think there's a box where you check off whether or not that that is actually a, a economic factor. Um, and you know, the first year you're in your home, once you buy a new home, you, you really don't go outside really that much. You're working on the inside. So your yard usually goes kind of on autopilot anyways, unless of course you're, uh, unless you hire people to take care of your, your areas. Also, um, there's a lot of radio and television advertisements and you know, encouraging people to go ahead and fertilize your lawn and keep it well. And it's really a lot of money being spent in that industry and it's very difficult to, um, you know, to get around those types of situations. Um, and also, at the university level, there's a lot of great research that occurs, um, but the funding a lot of times is from the, the polluters themselves so that we might not get the necessary results that we um, would, would think that are really going on there. And economics, uh, of course, the industry in Florida, phosphate mining has been going on for many, many years. and. Uh, they're getting towards the end of their uh, ability. There's not that many areas. They're now seeking new areas. They used to be kind of down in southwest Florida to excavate um, for the phosphorus and for the fertilizers. And now they're doing that more up in the, um, trying to outside of Gainesville. There was a new, some new mines that are opening up, which was rather upsetting for the neighbors in that area to deal with. So, Question: What is the phosphate used for? Uh, the phosphate uh, is is part of the fertilizer combinations. Um, although, fertilizer uh, phosphate has to do with uh, I think it's the cell integrity of the plant. So when the plant's growing, it, it makes the cells like with calcium. It makes the cells harder, so it makes the plants more hardy. Um, also, it's part of the nutrients to help it green up and grow uh, better leaves. Um, but there are rules now that uh, the, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. So Volusia County has some really good um, ordinances. They started their fertilizer ordinance in 2014, and there's only two cities out of the 16 that aren't participating in the um, in the fertilizer ordinances without the, with blackout dates. Um, so they recommend you fertilize two times a year, April and October. And I always suggest to people, wait until the day after tax day and go out and fertilize your yard. But you see that the commercials start early in the season, but the grasses really aren't awake yet from the sense that they're absorbing and taking up those nutrients yet. So if you uh, wait and fertilize April and you uh, do that appropriately, um, and then that'll get it started for the good, good season. Also, um, in the summertime, uh, they have ban from June 1st to September 30th. Nitrogen um, and no phosphorus are allowed to be put out. Um, some people put out potash or iron, and there's some controversy about the water quality impacts of, the, of that, but it's very difficult with industry to have to uh, to say, I'm sorry, but you know, it's during the blackout period, they are under contract to come to your home, you know, once a month, you pay, you sign up for a contract. Uh, also, the rest of the time, you're supposed to use a 50% slow release. And I'll get into what slow release fertilizers are, but does anybody know, what, who knows what slow release fertilizer is? Okay, so we'll, we'll definitely get that. 
Also, um, part of their ordinance is encouraging people to get a soil test. Has anybody here ever gotten a soil test? So the University of Florida uh, has a, a, a soil testing. There's like two types of uh, programs that you can do. One to just determine the pH of your soil, and that kind of helps you understand what's, you know, some plants have specific needs. And then the other is where you go around your yard with a, a trowel and you take a bucket and you take different scoops out of different parts of your yard. You mix that all together, you put it in a bag, and now uh, you send it off to the university or bring it out to the extension office. And then you'll get back this nice report that's rather difficult to read. So it's really good that you take that report in to the master gardeners and have them help you interpret that. Um, and so that's also a soil test is required to know whether or not you're supposed to use uh, the phosphorus because phosphorus is not in a lot of the uh, fertilizers that are, are being sold in some of the box stores and some of the other hardware areas. So um, also it's all the communities so far that have um, fertilizer ordinances have different setbacks. And so I think it's difficult for some of the, the companies to understand, but, but Volusia County has a 15 foot setback from a waterway. So if you are living adjacent to a stormwater pond or you live by a lake, and um, you see someone or spreading the fertilizer and they're putting that fertilizer while they're using their, uh, their spreader, it goes right into the waterways. You're supposed to leave it a, a 15 foot buffer between you and there. And also they encourage you not to, to mow in that area too, but that, that doesn't happen as often as we would like. Also, you can go to greenvolution.org and Be Floridian Now campaign. They have some wonderful information on their website. There's some sheets back there. So these, all these cryptic number, the letters down here, NPDES, MS4, non-point source pollution, and BMAPs are part of what we're gonna talk about. These are uh, different rules and regulations under the Clean Water Act. So uh, NPDES, uh, we'll go to the next sheet here. So this is kind of the legality. So we have a lot of laws. We're very law heavy when it comes to um, fertilizers. And you can see over the years, starting back in the 70s with the Clean Water Act and then an impaired water way rules. And the impairments are different in a lot of the words, but 70, I think it's 75% of the waterways in the state of Florida are impaired for some parameter. And that means for either nutrients or fecal coliform or um, they're for nitrogen nutrients. And so that's pretty scary. Uh, the National Pollution Discharge MS Municipal Separate Sewers. So the county uh, gets a permit from the state through the Department of Environmental Protection, and they're supposed to monitor the different waterways and collect data on the water chemistry and report that, and, and then make analysis and trying to uh, determine where those pollutions are coming from and then try to work on it. Uh, there's been a lot of education uh, that's gone on through that. I was an educator for that. And sure. now they've gotten it down to where they are doing kind of pounds of nitrogen trading. So if you have a, a fertilizer program, you'll, you'll uh, get credit for taking out like 100 pounds of nitrogen, which probably could cost like $3,000 a pound to remove. So they have some mitigation and some swapping out of those things. Uh, also, the Florida Department of, of Environmental Protection created a model ordinance in Florida Friendly Landscaping back in 2013 and modified it in 2015. And that essentially was just the baseline that all municipal governments, all governments that have that NPDES, the National Pollution Discharge Permit, are supposed to adopt. And there are still some municipal governments like Barry and Deltona and Sanford um, that haven't haven't adopted those yet for whatever reason I'm not sure of. Um, also, there was a labeling requirement. So, how many people in here read the, the the fertilizer labels? It's pretty confusing stuff. You got to figure out what percentage of total nitrogen is in it. And then you got to figure out how many pounds. And so, actually, you're supposed to go out and measure your lawn, uh, you know, and determine your actual square footage. And then that gives you to know how many cups 
or pounds of fertilizer, depending on uh, the amount of nitrogen in the bags. And I have a fertilizer bag that will make that. But it's very difficult to understand. Um, and a lot of people just say, oh, I just put it in the spreader. It says spreader number three and level, and you fill up the fertilizer and then you take off. And, um, but if you go to some of the technical best management trainings that occur, uh, they have certain pacing that you're supposed to walk and do, uh, you know, back and forth and then across to, to put out the fertilizer yeah. properly.